Happy Wednesday, hot news, everybody. We've got the freshest tech news of the day to get through, which is the only news you're paying attention to today. Nothing else going on in the history of the world. So let's get into the fact that it looks like Nvidia is paying more attention to miners than they were previously. And I do not mean those who are under 18. I mean, the people who turn their graphics card into money. And that's what's happening after the CFO gave a speech at the 19th annual JP Morgan Tech auto forum conference stating that if crypto demand begins or if we see a meaningful amount, we can also use that opportunity to restart the CMP or mining specific GPUs product line to address ongoing mining demand, but then also stating against what most people on the internet suspect, saying that we at NVIDIA don't have visibility on how much of the RTX 30 series and demand comes from mining. So we don't believe it's a big part of our business today. Gaming demand is very strong and we think that's larger than our current supply. However, that's not necessarily what reports behind the scenes have been indicating where Nvidia was giving massive drop shipments to miners before even retail samples could hit the product stream. So it's a conflicting report. Potentially you can trust the CFO of Nvidia to state that, or you could also trust the CFO of Nvidia to make sure that they're protecting their public image and not saying things that could potentially rile up the consumer base even more because we didn't talk about this last week, but in case you follow Gamers Nexus video, they reported that the RTX 30 ADTI has been delayed by NVIDIA simply because they don't want to deal with the bad optics of releasing another card that likely won't be in stock. NVIDIA is very much aware of how people are perceiving this situation right now, and they don't want to rustle your jimmies any further, and they don't want to produce any more Founders Edition cards, at least with the RTX 3060. In case you were an eagle-eyed viewer when NVIDIA announced this, you could see that the GPU that was designed right here looks different than the previous 3060 Ti and 3070. Well, it actually comes out that NVIDIA is not going to be making a Founders edition and that this is just some stock render that they did in order to showcase it, which they've done before. So it looks like only AIB versions is what you're going to be able to get your hands on in February, if you're able to get your hands on them at all. And NVIDIA got their hands on changing their standards for G-Sync Ultimate it used to be that you had to have a whole bunch of stuff in order to be the best monitor ever with G-Sync Ultimate enabled. And they have lowered the standards from 1000 nits for HDR brightness to 600 nits. However, NVIDIA released a statement saying that this is because with full array local dimming on typical LED displays, you're going to need about a thousand nits to actually get the proper contrast ratios that you want. Whereas on OLEDs, you can get that with six to 700 nits. So they are making it so that G-Sync Ultimate doesn't have to have effectively a thousand nits. If you're OLED, you can get 600 nits, which hopefully just means to me that we're going to be getting more OLED gaming monitors because that would be Dope. What also is dope is Bits Power's new RTX 3080 Founders Edition Premium Mobius VGA water block. This thing is gorgeous. It looks basically like the Founders Edition, except for it's going to be shorter because it's only the size of the PCB. I think Bits Power's hitting this one right out of the park, and AMD's hitting nothing out of the park. They're just, they're bunting. That's what's going on with this. The Ryzen 750 800G has been spotted the next gen APU, which for anybody who's been following along with my APU saga, I have retired my 4750G because it just wasn't enough for of the productivity that I do and rather I needed CUDA acceleration. So I've swapped out from that. Anyways, the 5800G is essentially going to be like my 4750G except for on Zen 3, so slightly faster CPU but it does look like it's still going to be Vega graphics, which is again disappointing. And it also looks like they're still going to be limited to PCI Express 3.0, still no 4.0 support. So still being behind a generation that way. The reason I was so excited for the 4000 series of APUs is because this was going to be the first bump up from four cores to eight cores. But now that it's just going to be a modest improvement to Zen 3, it's not necessarily something that I'm itching and scratching to get my hands on, but maybe I will when the time comes. And the time is coming for you to shell out some cash for Intel's Rocket Lake, and we've got some leaked pricing on what those are going to cost. It looks like there is going to be a price decrease only at the top end. The i9 is looking to see between a 6.1 and an 8.9 percent price decrease, whereas everything else is going to see a price increase with overall the generation is going to be a 2.8 percent price increase, which just makes sense. But it also looks like Intel's not adjusting to the fact that AMD is now the market leader. They have the performance advantage. They have the consumer advantage. They have the mind share advantage and Intel's pricing strategy does not reflect reflect that the only thing this reflects is that the i9 is obsolete because it's eight cores and so is the i7 so why the heck would you buy the i9 it just why
Wow. But don't worry, that's not the only expensive part. In case you want to get the full Intel experience, you're going to buy that $600 i9-11900K and you're going to spend $1,800 on the ROG Maximus 13 Extreme Glacial Motherboard. Oh my gosh, this thing is beautiful, right? It has the full monoblock. It's, it's awesome, but it's going to be 8 1930. This is coming out from Asus themselves saying in Europe it's going to cost 1516 euro. That is just a slap in the donkey. Watch your profanity. Holy crap. All right, well, let's talk about Intel's next next generation of expensive stuff. Alder Lake has gotten a benchmark which showcases it has 16 cords and 32 threads all running with DDR5, which is uh, technology we haven't seen implemented in the consumer sector just yet. However, it's not clear if what and how these 16 cores merge together to create the Ultron that is Alder Lake. Is it all 16 big cores? Is it eight big cores and eight little cores? We don't quite know and we'll find out, I suppose, at some point in the future. But you can see this is an exclusive photo from video card showing that this thing's going to be slightly taller than previous generations. That's my key takeaway of Alder Lake. Intel's getting lanky and Samsung's getting more official with the 870 Evo being officially announced. Just going to be the fastest two and a half inch SATA SSD that you could buy in two terabytes for $270, four terabytes for $530. It makes sense. Samsung does really good stuff. There it is. You know what doesn't do good stuff? Social media. It's not good for your brain. So maybe just, you know, lay off of it. But you know, Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, can't lay off of it. So with Tesla's new support specialist, they're going to have to moderate Elon Musk's ads essentially because that's been revealed in the new full time role for that saying that they need to resolve or escalate complaints through appropriate channels and address social media escalations directed at the CEO with critical thinking. You guys, keep adding Elon Musk. He needs to hire people to, to take care of it. It's, it's not going to be him anymore, my friends. Sad. Is it? Is it really sad? I don't know. But it's very clear from following Elon Musk on Twitter. You know, he likes anime. Speaking of anime, Final Fantasy, because same thing, essentially, whatever. Final Fantasy 7 Remake, according to a new rumor coming out of Reset Era, saying that it's going to be coming out on Steam and PS5 later this year. That makes sense because the PS4 exclusivity is up in April, a year after Final Fantasy VII Remake came out. So we should be getting it on further places. That would be great. Maybe a Xbox Game Pass? I'd love to see that. That's not what this rumor says, but it, I'm, just, I'm just talking about PC and PS5. And I'm not talking about anything anymore because that's going to be all of your tech news for today, my friends. That is the end of hot news. I'm so glad that you have been here with us. Hope you are enjoying your January. I will catch you in whatever it is we do next, next tomorrow, because we just more news. Bye.